Hello YouTube. In this video, let's do a, an evaluation of this uh, network scanner. The name is MyTech Network Scanner. And let's test it and let's see how it performs when scanning the network and the difference functionality and how it compares to other scanners. Uh, the name is MyTech Network Scanner. I'm going to leave the link down in the description. Um, it's a free software. Um, the functionality is, is really it's not that uh, complicated um, on the top in this section here we have the option to do an IP range scan and this one does a neighbor ne network neighborhood scan I wonder what this one <laughs> what is the network neighborhood scan uh, this one is active directory scan so if you have an active directory in your network you can I guess you can do a scan uh, and it'll give you all the objects within your active directory so let's go ahead and do a scan uh, i'm going to start by doing a network neighborhood scan and see what happens so right away it start populating um, this device list section with four different ip addresses and i noticed one thing is that the ip address they're all different ranges and they all belong to the same host. This is my local computer. So I guess if I do a window R CMD IP config, uh, notice that I have multiple network adapt. I have multiple network adapter, and most of them are virtual adapter. And like this one here, for example, is a V Ethernet, probably from VirtualBox or um, or Hyper V. It's the IP address is 172.31.48 and network neighborhood what it's doing it's scanning my computer for available interfaces and the other one it's IP range scan uh, so let's go ahead and do that one I'm going to populate my network address from 1 to 254 and um, if I come here to, uh, okay, if I go to File Preferences, I have the preferences for the uh, for the application. Notice here that uh, in general, in the general section, I have the option to check for updates at startup. Um, and here I can set the number of threads and that it can run simultaneously when performing a scan. I'm going to bump this up to, let's say, 20 threads. So we can perform a fa faster scan. Detection is using ICMP by default. Timeout one second. And it's going to retry it. It's going to give it one retry. Um, NetBIOS is not available. Definitely we're going to use ARP, which is Address Resolution Protocol. Um, all the computers have a, an ARP table with a mapping between IP address and MAC address. So I guess if you enable ARP, the first thing it's going to do is going to check that ARP table for available computers in the network. It's a faster way to, to speed up the scan. Um, TC port, TCP port scan, um, it says 139.3389. That, this one, 139, I believe is uh, NetBIOS, and 3389, and that's remote desktop. I don't know why it says... TCP ports out, oh, okay, because you want to be able to detect uh, if any of the computers on the network have, you know, those ports available. So I'm going to check that one. For UDP, I'm going to leave it blank. Uh, resolve IP address version 6. Uh, the more of these settings that we enable, I guess the scan is going to take even longer. A deep scan, registry, WMI, SNMP. SNMP a system network management protocol that's for uh, that's an agent that is running on the clan in order to um, get information and reporting um, uh, on the on the network um, and registries to get registry information I'm not going to enable this for now let's go ahead and click OK and let's do a scan and see how fast it performs scan Notice here on the right hand side it says thread status. So it's 
20, 20 of 254. I guess if I wa really wanted to finish fast, I could have, I could have started somewhere like 100 threads. Um, but it's already being detected quite a few computers. Notice that I have that one, which probably is the router here at the IP address. And if I select an IP here, it's going to give me a device detail it's called device inspector on this uh, on this side and at the bottom it's it's basically as a time graph of the signal uh going through my um, wireless adapter because i'm connected using a wireless car and apparently the scan finish i noticed that you know the signal went from having a lot of activity to uh, no activity and i have quite a few devices on the network um so with only 20 and it's still doing scan it's still getting information it's actively getting information from from the devices um it didn't actually take too long uh let me click on this one it doesn't give you a lot of detail i guess it depends on the type of device if it is a phone, uh, it might not be able to um, pull a lot of information from the phone. Uh, it dep also depends on the type of phone it is and the operating system. Uh, this one here, for example, is a router. Um, Uh, this one here is obvious, you know, as soon as you click on a window computer, <laughs> it gives you, window computers are very chatty, and they give out a lot of information, uh, because they constantly are trying to uh, send other devices on the network, just like a router, a router is also very chatty on the network, because it sends um, uh, router advertisement to other computers, um, and so if a window computer, you turn on, let's say, neighbor, neighborhood discovery, uh, trying to detect other computers on the network or advertising their own services like uh, shares, uh, network shares, that sort of thing, um, it's easier to detect uh, information on that computer. So here I can see the fully qualified domain name, the IP address, MAC address, open ports, Right now, I have a NetBIOS open port. Um, the, the user currently logging in the system, the workgroup, the Windows uh, version. Um, they even pull out, uh, let's see, how long the computer has been running. Um, and flags. It says workstation server nt potential browser master all that thing about browser master i believe that has to do with uh, netbios uh, netbios is constantly browsing the network for information um, this here it's my computer obviously if you run you know this application from your local computer it's going to detect a lot more information than from other computers in the network um, but let's continue um, here you can uh, detect IP from host name so it prompts you to basically what it's doing is resolving from host name to IP address so if I say for example microsoft.com click OK um, it's going to give me I guess all the IP addresses um, the Microsoft has associated with microsoft.com um here it, this is a who is basically querying uh, a dns registration database when you register your domain name uh, you have to provide information like who is the uh the person in charge of the domain who's running the domain or the website or the servers that are um the the hosting services whether it is godaddy.com that sort of thing so I'm going to say google.com, click search, and it'll give you 
all the information pertaining to google.com like you know the, the the domain names the name servers responsible for running the website or resolving that website um the company that is registered uh and that sort of thing uh detect external ip address um this is going to basically detect the public ip of the of the router that is the interface that is facing the internet this this is assigned by your isp also is detecting the um your isp company in this case is comcast um, location um it gives you a link to ip info that io which probably is going to give you more information about the um the ip address and i'm going to click ok and let me see if I can go to that go go to that link. And I thought it was going to give me more information, but um, if you do IP config, I mean, if you do IP info.io uh, backslash JSON, it's going to give you information about your location, public IP address. Uh, la latitude and longitude, uh, the the ISP, uh, the postal code, and um, and the time zone. So that's basically what is pulling here. Um, this one, virus total. I don't know. I guess it's a link to a virus uh, detection or virus scan. And this one, let's click on this one. Adva Advanced Device Explorer. And what is this one doing? I don't know. Let's enter an IP address. I'm going to enter 10.0.0.1. And I'm going to press enter. And basically it's giving me um, the details that shows here. But also here I can click on shares. And see if it has any shares available. Open file sessions um services let's click on services and notice that here i can enter a username and password in order to authenticate remotely to different computers and um, this makes it easy to pull all this information once you have credentials on the remote system um you know obtaining all of this info is a lot easier um i guess you can use this uh, some sort of re uh, network reporting software where you can pull information from different computers on the network uh, it didn't detect anything uh, let me check another computer press enter um, let me see let me click on shares this is my local system and uh, like you know like i said it probably can it probably already has the the username and password for that system <laughs> and that's how i say you know obtaining network shares is easy you can do this pro the, the application probably can do this using netbios um terminal sessions okay so i have two terminal sessions here services Do have any services running processes he can he can obtain um, process on the, uh, the remote system install software he can obtain that too um, accounts hasn't been able to pull all the accounts port scanner I can run a port scanner here uh, event log explorer oh boy he can pull my event log it's, uh, you see, it's, it's, it's trying to connect to the system. All right, so it, as you can see, pull information on my, on my event log, system information, WMI Explorer. I guess you can use WMI commands in order to query specific information. If you click on the drop-down menu here, you can, for example, pull the 
the BIOS version. So let's do that one. Let's execute. So that's pretty cool. And so it is using WMI in order to obtain all this uh, good stuff. Processor information. Execute that one. Definitely, if you enter, you know, a an administrator password <clears throat> here with an administrator account in every single computer on your network, it makes this a lot easier. Uh, let's see, open files. I have already checked this one out. Accounts. All right, so I believe that's it. Um, if you click on about. Um, it'll give you more information about the software. Uh, it's called MyTech Network Scanner. This is a 64 architecture, version 5.6. And um, it says it was uh, released in 2007. And the latest release was in 2021, which it seems to be kept pretty up to date. Um, and copyright information. So that is it. Um, The interface doesn't seem to respond. Um, it's it's kind of weird. It makes weird effect. Um, but anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.